We're back! <laughs> Welcome to the Soft Magnetics Hard Topics. I am Bridget and this is Mike. Um, so today we are going to talk about powder. And the first question is Can I make my own ferrite? Um, yeah, we do get asked that quite a bit. Folks wanting to make their own ferrite parts. And the Short answer is yes. The long answer is yes, but it depends. So we do we do sell ferrite powder. This is just loose ferrite powder in the fully uh, sintered reacted state. Um, it has magnetic properties, but it's not as simple as just kind of forming it into whatever shape you're looking for. And how does the cinder powder compare to like regular ferrite powder? So this sees the same sintering process as, you know, a solid core. Um, I have these wound because I was just doing some inductance testing on them, which is pertinent to this point. Um, so the performance is going to not really in most aspects look like a normal ferrite core. So you can see the size of these. This is a plastic vial, totally full of ferrite powder. Here's a fairly small rod by comparison, though approximately the same length. These are wound with the same amount of turns on them. And you get, as a inductance result on this, you know, picture it as a rod maybe, um, you're gonna get approximately the same inductance. And this is, significantly more powder than this one is. So you would expect this should be a bit higher. It's not, it's about the same as this. Actually, this is a little bit higher. Uh, why that is, so the base material has approximately the same permeability as one another, which at 10 kilohertz is going to be what is gonna make the difference for your inductance reading. Uh, the geometry, the length is about the same. This is, you know, much greater diameter, which should increase the cross-sectional area of the core, which should make your inductance go higher. But it's not higher. And it's not higher because this material, while the material itself should have a permeability in the six to 800 range, it's not actually going to be that high. It's probably realistically more, more like five or 10, something like that. Um, that's because all the ferrite particles haven't been through the sintering process in a compacted shape, so they haven't grown together to make um, you know, like a solid crystalline structure, which is increasing the permeability of the material. So the actual particles themselves, you know, the characteristics of them are, are going to be similar, but because there's air and you know whatever else between all the discrete particles, your average permeability of the material is much, much lower. Um, loss characteristics over frequency may be somewhat similar to a solid um, ferrite material, but it's not able to um, form that same sort of larger structure, which is one of the main differences between something like a powdered iron and a ferrite, is that it goes through that sintering process to become one solid objects. So why would someone pick sintered powder over a solid core? So while it doesn't, you know, if you're trying to make a toroid or a rod or like an e-core or something out of sintered powder, you'll wind up with something of a compromised material that's not going to perform like maybe you want it to if you're trying to do that as a method to, to form your own shapes. It's maybe not so great for that. What it does do pretty well is it still has magnetic properties to it, and it still has um, some of the loss characteristics that ferrite will. So you can use it as a, uh, if you wanted to make something like a magnetic coating for something, if you were trying to manipulate the inductance of a conductor by being able to just coat it without having a whole big core assembly in something, um, you know, it'll still have some shielding properties to it and some um, you know, dissipation, attenuation properties to it. So as coatings, it can work well. Um, 
I've seen several papers that uh, suggest using a, something like a gap filler. So when you have a ferrite core, a lot of times you will gap a ferrite core in order to change the inductance, soften the saturation of it. This, you know, is not, doesn't have quite the same properties as solid ferrite, but it has way higher permeability than something like air that the gap would normally consist of. So you can still get softer saturation characteristics like you would with air, but increasing the uh, inductance of, you know, whatever the device is, a transformer, or inductor, or whatever. Um, so it, there's stuff that you can use it for, for sure. And it's pretty good for a lot of stuff. But you have to, I guess, temper your expectations with exactly what you're going to do with it. Um, it doesn't make a great replacement for something like a you know big solid ferrite toroid. Um, you make this out of powder, they're going to perform very differently. But if you were trying to coat something, fill a gap, something along those lines, um, yeah, it could be pretty neat for that. So if they have any questions about some dirt powder, you can comment and like we'll apply. Yeah. Um, and we don't really, they might not have seen it on our website before, but if you have any questions about synthetic powder or want to request some sampling or something, you could just go on the website and uh, request a quote or sample or ask the advisor and you get an answer from Mike. Ask the advisor and we will advise. Yes, yes, all good. Um, is that all you have for us? Yeah, I think so. We're going to talk about small parts at some point, but a little bit bigger than these individual little grains of ferrite. Mm. We'll probably scale it up a little bit from there. That's a little small. Very cool. Well, thanks for joining. Bye. Bye. Bye.